Good morning. My name is John Whitmayer. I'm the Director of Music Ministry at Salem Lutheran Church and School in Afton, Missouri, and it's my privilege to bring you a devotion this morning. Today's devotion is another in the series of Monday Blessings, written by my father, Pastor Gary Whitmayer, during his time in active ministry. Today's devotion is based on Luke chapter 2, verse 19, which reads, But Mary treasured up all of these things and pondered them in her heart. Pastor Gary writes, Boy, oh boy, this was the year I was going to get a bigger piece to say in the Christmas service. I can remember going to that first practice. All those one-liners like, Jesus is born, and the shepherds were sore afraid, were beneath me now. I did like the shepherd one, although I didn't have the foggiest notion how one could get sore from being afraid. I was a third grader now. Certainly, I would have a Joseph part, or a Herald Angel part. I wouldn't have to work very hard to memorize any of these lines. I knew most of them already. I think they ran one of those tricky little contests that adults like to pull on children. Can anyone here say the word enmity? The pastor asked. Hands went up all around. Not wanting to seem inept, I put mine up too. Let's hear you say it, he prompted. I guess I won or lost, depending on one's view. It was probably the first time I ever pronounced anything correctly. Nice job, Gary. Here's your part, said the pastor. I read carefully. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. What kind of Christmas piece was that? I didn't have the foggiest notion what it meant. Except for enmity, I knew what all the words meant. <clears throat> but the way they were put together left me clueless. Although incomprehensible to my mind, these words seemed magnificently powerful. Christmas Eve, I faced that group of adoring parents and grandparents and spoke for God. In spite of their power and hint of judgment, they were not fearsome words, but strangely comforting. God was planning to do something great. While I was disappointed with my part, as I look back on it now, I do believe it was the beginning of my calling. This strange passage intrigued me. It begged for clarification and understanding. Throughout the years, I would ponder again the meaning of these troubling words. By design, God had given me a great treasure, a puzzle to unravel. Your heart, too, is the repository for many of the gems of the Holy Spirit. Be pleased and consider yourself blessed if some of them are a little bit puzzling. God has given you something to ponder, as he did Mary. How can a virgin have a child? Think about it, Mary. God is planning to do something great with you and for you. Think about it, dear Christian. God has great plans for you, too. If God be for us, who can be against us? God has put enmity, read himself, between you and sin, death, and the devil. God himself stands in the way of those who would destroy. It, in its strange wording, is God's promise of Jesus, of Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, and Judgment Day all rolled into one. It is his promise of the Christ in the flesh to redeem sinful flesh. The entire scripture is an extension of this first promise of God to redeem the world. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. Would you please pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for coming between us and the power of sin. We praise you for your promise of life eternal through our Savior Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching and listening today. May God bless your Monday and your week. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>